Kelly's Corner. Welcome back. And if you are a new subscriber, um, welcome. Thank you for joining me. Um, today, <laughs> well, I got to tell you before I tell you what I'm going to do. This is the second time I have tried to record this video. Last night, I, I tried to put something together and um, it was just a colossal flop. And so... Normally, you know, I don't mind showing my mistakes. I don't have a problem with that because, it, you know, we're not perfect and mistakes happen and sometimes you can cover them up and sometimes they're happy accidents and so it's okay. Um, but last night I tried to to make an envelope, simple envelope. This guy, this is so easy to do. And I, I don't know, it was Monday, I was tired. Um, I guess that's the excuse I'm going with anyway. So we're going to try this again. Um, I have been fortunate enough to get a hold of several rolls of piano paper roll, player piano paper rolls. And they are, um, they're awesome. It's just very thin, very uh, fragile because they're really old paper. And it's got these cool holes in it and the words to the songs up the side going in backward order and they're just cool and in the um friends with coffee journal that i just did and that flip through um you saw at the very end in the inside back pocket i had placed an envelope that i'd made from a player piano roll i've got a couple more here and both of these all three of them the one from that flip and both of the ones here, which are not finished, but they're close enough to show you. Um, these were made from the end or the beginning of the roll. This is the part of the roll that that hooks onto the piano, I guess, um, so that it can play. <laughs> and uh, you, you only get, you get one of those in a roll, but then you have this whole roll of stuff left over. So um, I've done a few different things with them. I've made some pockets. And uh, so now tonight I'm going to make a, an envelope, simple, simple envelope with um, a piece of that roll. So I'll just show you these real quick. I said they're not done. Um, I haven't figured out what kind of attachment I wanna do on this one uh, and I still need to sew it but I just lined it with a very old piece, very brittle piece of paper that was the end paper of a an, um, book that I gutted. And I'll show you here. Um, here's a little tiny piece left over and it just, it just like snaps. It, uh, it doesn't even tear. So the only way really to use that paper is to use it to where it's completely being glued down. And so this was a good, good use for that. So that's that. Just a little piece of book page there. Then this one, um, I added a little lace and some sorry silk here on the end. I've also on this one have a magnet in it. Um, and you can see the magnet is here. I may put a magnet in the one I'm working on now. And then I've lined the inside, what you'll be able to see of the inside, plus a little more, with a, um, it's fabric. It's, um, I believe it's Tim Holtz fabric. I've had it forever and I've never used it. And I thought I would go ahead and, and do that. This also needs to be sewn down the sides. So both of these need to be sewn. And on the back, I added a piece of vintage lace and another piece of that fabric and just a little sewing um, gadgets image from some old paper that I had. So. What I've got going on here are um, the one I'm getting ready to make and the two that I've made recently, or um, I've not done, obviously, almost made recently, um, are going to be for books. So in my head, I've got um, some ideas for some, for some journals. One of those is um, a sewing theme. So, so that would be saved for that one. Another is a... This is a... Uh, this butterfly is from Love Junk Journals from Tracy Fox from her The Sketchbook Kit. And I'm also going to be using, I'm going to take that kit and mirror it with 
um, a kit from Susan Taylor Brown called uh, Forest Morning. Gorgeous kit, and that'll be my design team project for poppiness for Susan T Taylor Brown. And so this envelope will be used in that journal. So I'm just kind of doing some make ahead. Um, not that long ago, I remember seeing uh, somebody in a Facebook group had asked, you know, if you're doing make aheads and and you don't know what you're making it or, or you work in themes, how do you do that? And the answer to that is that I either have some ideas of some things coming up um, that I want to do. And if I make a bunch of stuff for it, then I'm sure to do it, right? Theoretically. Um, or I make things that are sort of um, generic enough or neutral enough is maybe a better word that I can use them in different journals and it doesn't really, they don't have to be exact. If you're doing a theme that is um, nature, for example, there's so many different possibilities there. But if you're doing you know, like the coffee journal that I just finished where that's very specific. You can still take coffee colors like browns and creams and create um, different pieces and make ahead pieces that would be complementary to that journal without being that exact theme. That's not what I'm doing today though. Um, what I'm doing is uh, I'm going to make another envelope using the guts of the paper this time instead of the beginning. And um, I'm going to make it for a journal that I want to do coming up that it will be a forest animals journal. I love my critters, and I think that would just be a really fun book to do. So, um, so yeah, let's get started. So let me tell you what I've done so far, and I did this um, so that it would be dry tonight. Basically, I just took a piece of... Uh, craft card stock. It's just a kind of a lightweight card stock. It gives a little bit of, of oomph. And I just used matte medium, matte gel, um, and glued it down. Glued the paper down. Just cut a piece long enough and then trimmed off some of the edge and glued it down. So now I see and I still have a ton of this left over. So this lasts forever. But if you ever do get the opportunity to get um, a paper roll, play, wait, blah, 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 player piano paper roll. That's like saying Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Or I'm not sure what he picked. Pickled something or other. Um, <clears throat> anyway, player piano roll, by all means, uh, grab it up. So I'm going to just trim off a little here on the side, just because, um, for a couple reasons. One, the glue hadn't glued very well there. <laughs> so, so yeah, so there's that. Um, and I also don't want this to be terribly wide. I think I only want it to be about, um, let's think about this for a second. Let's make her six inches wide. So hopefully I've got this straight. See, I can't, I don't even, I can't even cut a straight line with a, with a cutter where I've got rules and everything. Okay, Let's trim that off there. And then, let me get this out of the way. I'll probably trim some more. Well, I might trim some more lengthwise, but we'll see. We'll see, and I'll save this for, some other fun thing later. Um, now I'm gonna just grab my little baby scoring board here. That trimmer, by the way, is worth its weight in gold. Um, I love it. I will put, I can add uh, a link below to that particular trimmer. I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay, I want a pocket that is I think I want a pocket that's four inches. Yeah, so I'm gonna go three and a quarter here. And this is the piece that folds up. And then from that one, yeah, this will fold this away. And then this will fold down. And so from there, we're gonna go four inches, because that'll give me 
That'll give me a little, yeah. That'll give me a little, oh, maybe I'll do four and a quarter. Hmm, nah, let's do four. I'll do four inches here. And then that folds down there. And I can either make this a really long flap like this, or I can kind of trim this off. Uh, I think I'm gonna trim it off just a little bit. Just a little. You can make these flaps any size you want. Um, let's see. Let's trim off mind. I'll trim off mind. Like so. There. There we go. I like it. That's a nice little size. Okay, so that's a four inch by six inch um, envelope ish. Okay, now I just want to, I want to, 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 I went around my corners. This is also a really cool tool. It's got four different, or excuse me, three different sizes on it. And I'm using the medium. I'm gonna round these as well. And then I'm gonna ink her up. So this is the part where I always, I. <laughs> I always feel bad that I'm like, you know, inking on camera, but um, and I'm just gonna kind of be real sloppy with this because um, th this paper really absorbs this ink well, almost too well. But then the more I kind of kind of get out here in the middle and jump around, um, I think it just adds a little, this is fun. Um, and I will sew the edge of this if I have any edges that haven't kind of completely glued down. I'm not real worried about that. I'll sew around it and they'll be fine in this weird time that we're in. But you got it, you know, you just got to look on the bright side. And you got to stay positive and you got to try not to go too, too terribly stir mad crazy, not so cuckoo. And well, I mean, unless you already are, because <laughs> then it's okay. All right, I think, well, George, I think we've got it just about, just kind of, and again, I'm just kind of being sloppy with this because, because I can, because this paper is just cool. All right, there we go. Now, when I do this, I don't get the benefit of being able to see the little slots through here. You're seeing the craft paper come through and you could actually use any color. I just happened to grab a piece of craft color. Um, but you know what, that's okay. This paper is so thin and fragile, fragile, <laughs> fragile, <laughs> that you wouldn't really be able to create an envelope that that, that, that held up. Um, and, and so I think it's okay. It still has a really neat effect and um, it looks good. Also on the fold, sometimes with this older paper, you kind of get some cracking here on the fold. You can see just as I rub my finger across it, turn it and I just, clean that up a little bit with my fingernail or with a little piece of a little um, distress tool and I'm okay with it being a little rugged like that. It doesn't bother me at all. All right, so we've got some basics down here. Now I want to, I think I want to line this with, hmm, I think I want to line this with some fabric because I like lining them with fabric. And here's a piece that's kind of pretty. Some matte gel on there. I like using matte gel because it does help me kind of get it a little smoother. Um, Susan Taylor Brown has a video out that she did not that long ago um, where she was, I'm looking for a piece of scrap that I can set underneath this, where she was um, created a, okay. She did a uh, videos on how to affix thinner or lightweight papers and, and lightweight fabrics using matte medium and or Mod Podge, but letting it dry and then ironing it on. And so it gives a very um, bubble free, <laughs> a nice effect, smooth, very smooth. Very, very smooth and pretty effect. And I'm the only reason I'm not doing that with this fabric in this envelope is because, um, A, two reasons. Um, a, I don't want to wait for it to dry. 
and B, because this fabric is actually pretty heavy. And I don't know, whoops, I think I'm shutting. I don't know um, if it would work. I'd have to test it out just because, um, because it is heavy. And it might, uh, I just haven't tested it yet. So I don't know for certain. Let's see, I don't know what the, oh, this is the right side. I think that whole time I was messing with it it's the wrong side. And this is the side that's cut straighter, although neither one of them are cut straight. But this works also in this particular instance because this is a heavier, it's a cotton, but it's a heavier weight cotton. Squeak, sorry. Squeak, squeak. It works just fine. I don't have any trouble really getting it to stick. Um, and what I can do also is come in here and check my edges. And, and if they're not, if it feels like they're not sticking, just add a tiny bit of glue, but they are, I feel like they are. All right, now what I'm gonna do, so I've got this score up here and I wanna kind of train that fabric to, let me get this out of the way. Train, I wanna train that fabric to, um, to, to bend here. So I'm just gonna take my bone folder and I'm gonna fold and run it across with the skinny part, just so I can get that fabric to squish into that fold. There we go. And then I will do the same here. And here. There we go. So, there we go. Nice and smooth, beautimous. Now all I gotta do is trim her up, and then we need to decorate it. You don't have to, I think these are pretty just as is. I don't think they absolutely have to have anything on there, but, um, but I'm not gonna use those scissors. I'm gonna switch scissors to the babies because that'll make this a lot easier, I think. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and decorate it though and just get a little bit a little bit of something, something going on here. As soon as I see, look at me, I've got to concentrate while I cut. That's so sad. I really, you'd think, you would think, you would think that I don't have to do that anymore, that at some point in my life, um, I would be able to cut things. But no. All right. That does have a little edge there that, that looks like it might have not quite glued like I would like it to, but I will add a little bit more to it. There we go. See, look, I'm on a roll now. Yay. Uh, got it. Corners. I probably should have waited and chopped that corner afterwards because there's a little piece there that just doesn't want to cooperate. There we go. All right. Um, but I am, again, I'm gonna sew around this whole thing. And so if there's a little bit of an edge that isn't quite glued down as nicely as I think it should be, I'm not gonna fret too, too much about it because it'll be fine because it's I'm sewing it. So, so there's that. Let's see if I can get that around. <laughs> yeah, good enough. Yeah, no, not quite. I know you probably can't see what I see on on video because it looks like I'm like cutting nothing, but there is there's a little tiny piece sticking out there. <laughs> okay. There we go. I like it. So now this is ready to uh, ready to sew. But I got to think about: Do I want to? Do I want a closure on here, or do I just want this to flap over? Um, a couple things I could do. Of course, I could have put a magnet in here 
But now I've already got this lace piece or the fabric on there. And so that I kind of feel like, eh, it's a little late for that. I should have done that earlier. If I was going to do a magnet, I would have done it before I put that fabric in there. Um, so no, so no, I'm not going to do that. But I do know somewhere around here, I've got this little, yeah, here he is. Um, he's a little, I don't know, squirrel, chipmunk. What is that? He's a little forest animal guy. And I want to put him on here. And I think I want him to be on this side. Oh, uh, you know what? I want to put him on here with a label. So let me grab my labels. I didn't, um, I didn't think this through well enough to sort of get everything ready to go. I just have an old stamp collector's book here that I have a bunch of labels and stuff in. It's got a layer of dust on it because of where it sits. Let's wipe it off. <laughs> um, and I, when I really do have some stamps in here too. And some word cards, but somewhere in here, there's a sticker, here we go. Uh, not red, not blue. Let's stick with neutral colors. Here we go. I think most of these are from Tracy Fox. Uh, love junk journals. Do I want a fancy one? Do I want a fancy one? Mm -hmm. Nah, nah, nah. Let's put him back. I think maybe I want just a regular square one, maybe a bigger one to where I can get some. Ooh, I kind of like that. What do you think? Is that too dark? What about an oval? That's kind of fun. Maybe, 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 maybe. Um, I don't know though, I kind of like the darker one. Let's do it, let's do it, let's go for it. Don't overthink it, just do it. I have to remind myself of that constantly. I'm just gonna double check to make sure there's not any others in here that I've forgotten. I see some of these pages are empty. Um, yeah, okay, no, we're good. We're good, let me get that out of the way. So this is just a simple guy. Not a whole lot going on here. Do I like that with that? Yeah, I do. Not a whole lot going on here. Um, I'm just gonna use a label. I'm gonna go ahead and ink the edge just to get rid of the white so that when it's sitting down on the piece, you don't see that white edge coming through. The bonus benefit to doing that, aside from the whole white edge thingy, is that if you're not a good cutter like me and it's maybe not straight and you have a little bit of white on there, I've already inked him, um, then you can sort of hide that too. Huh. So, all right, let's do this here. I want to put this off to the side a little bit so I can get more, more of the more of the lines and stuff in here. So I think I'm gonna go with that right there. I'm gonna use art glitter glue, just because it's kind of perfect for this. Um, it's a lightweight glue. I mean, it, it works paper to paper. It's just absolutely awesome. Dries fast. Um, and you get, if you're, if you're detail gluing, you've got this nice thin little point here that gets you, allows you to detail that. Okay, and it doesn't have glitter in it. It's called Art Glitter Glue because that's the name of the company. Okay, <laughs> I know at first I thought it like, why, why would I want to use glue um, that has glitter in it? Like, why would I do that? I wouldn't. Okay, that's on there good enough. And I want this little guy but let's put some, let's put something, something behind him. How about some cheesecloth? Just happen to have a little piece right here. So I'm gonna snip off a piece of cheesecloth, which I love. Um, I'll save that for next time. And that's got a big old chunk of weirdness going on there. Let's cut that off. And then kind of wrinkle her up a little. And maybe, oh, that's got a weird shape too. Okay. <laughs> maybe it's like that. 
No, let's go a little bit more like that. That's kind of cute. Yeah, no, nah, me. Mm, it doesn't excite me. Maybe it's too, maybe it's too tall. Okay, let's kind of rough this up a little bit. Okay, let's see if, oh. <laughs> roughed it up too much. Let's see what that does for me. Yeah, meh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. It's cute. Um, I like it, maybe down a little bit more. Kind of lining it up with this little, this little piece here. I do like that. Um, but maybe he's too far over. Maybe he, no. Maybe I shouldn't use this little guy. No, I think he's cute though. He's so cute. And I love the idea of using a faux tea card on this. Um, but perhaps it needs one more thing. Somewhere over here in this mess, I have some of Tracy's random numbers left over from, because I used a bunch of them when I did the coffee with friends journal. And they're still sitting in a pile over here on my desk, because, ah, here they are. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see if there's one in here. Maybe one that's a bit of an ovaly shape. A darker ovaly shape. Ooh, I kind of like that one. Let's see if that works. Let's see if that kind of gives me... I definitely tend to lay things out in threes. And with just the label and just the little guy, it's, it's just... It feels... Um, Oops, that fell on the floor. It feels like it's missing something. So I'm just gonna trim this this up. I may not be on camera, sorry. Uh, if I'm not I'm trying to trim it without getting paper all over the place. Um, so yeah, I, I think uh, having a third piece or a third element, well, I know, I know, I know. It, there's cheesecloth there, and that technically is an element, but it's not, it's it's really light and it's not quite enough. And there's just something visually about this that I don't like yet. But I really want to use that guy. And so we're gonna try this. And if this, if I still don't like it, if it still doesn't work, then I will go to plan B. And I don't know what plan B is yet, but maybe I won't have to go to plan B. All right, so what if this guy comes up a little and, no, what if, <laughs> like I'll be here all night trying to figure this out. What if he's just, no, and I don't want his head chopped off, poor guy. Oh, there, that kind of gives me, let's see, that kind of works. I like that. I like it. It's kind of creating, yep, yep. Okay, all right, well enough anyway. It's not the best thing I've ever done in my life, but I do like it. Okay, so let's glue all these guys down. So I'm gonna put just a little bit of a dabble do you here, right here, just to kind of keep that sitting there while I glue the rest of it. And I probably completely moved it when I picked it up and it's gonna be in a completely different spot when I lay this down. <laughs> ah, that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. I have to remind myself that. It does not have to be perfect, does not have to be perfect, does not have to be perfect. Okay. I think that's good. I like it. Let's get some of that extra little fraying off there. <clears throat> and now we're gonna put we're gonna put this down. Oh, and I've got an idea. Ooh, ooh. So I think I'll use a little bit of lace on the um, on the flap 
and it's that vintage lace that I have. Oh, see, I do, I do like that. Let's get it on there. There we go. Yeah, so that's kind of cute, right? Um, I have, I have a piece of lace. Okay, hang on. This is really old, and if it's not too fat, oh, look, it's perfect. How often does that happen? Okay. Yay. I used this on this. Oh, here, let's get that off of my hand. I used this on this also. Um, and, you know, you talk about covering up your mistakes. There was a big sort of bubble on this that I just didn't get glued down. I probably didn't roll it fast enough or something. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right about here. And the lace just totally covered it up. So, so there. It's a, just a cool piece. I got this at. Um, hmm, I got it at a, at an estate sale. Okay, all right. So what I'm going to do is put the glue on here. I'm pretty sure this is the back side. It's hard to tell <laughs> on some of these. I'm just going to dot some glue around here so it stays on, and I will make sure I'm in camera. Try not to get too much glue, that is, because I don't want it, it. This dries clear, so it's fine if it kind of, you know, oozes out a little bit. It's, it's the world's not going to come to an end, um, but I just would rather try not to get it all over the place. And all over me and um, but I think it's too late for that I think I already got it all over me so that's all right though just go with flow um, <laughs> this is exciting isn't it okay so as soon as I get the glue on here I think um, I, I won't sew this on camera uh, or um, while I'm recording just because the sewing machine is loud, um, it's not that exciting, but I will pause this, go sew it real quick, and then come back so that you can see what this looks like. And then we have just the simplest, cutest little envelope made with player piano paper roll. Again, don't say it fast, or if you can, I don't, can you say it fast? Everybody practice that. And then practice the Peter Piper tongue twister. Let's do this. So I can maybe get it straight. Although, here we go. I like it. I like it. Yeah, see I got some oozing there. That's okay. There's oozing, there's oozing everywhere. But it'll dry clear. And what I'll do then is I'll wait until this dries before I give it a sew, before I run it down the, with the machine, just so that I don't get glue unnecessarily. Um, on the sewing machine needles. All right. I'm pulling this because it has a little bit of give to it. And if I pull it while it's wet, not too tight, um, but it'll help get that edge fairly straight. So if we pull just a tiny bit on the two sides, at least, at least that works for me. All right, let's trim this. Didn't get that. And there's more, there's more, there's always more. And just wanna make sure that edge is down tight. And we'll do this one. Okay. Again, make sure that edge is down tight. And that is Good to go. 
All right, it's ready, it's done. All I gotta do now is, um, actually, you know what? No, no, stop. I was gonna say a little button on that might be cute. We'll save that for another time. Okay, so all I gotta do is sew it and it's done. And, and I'll be back once I've got it sewn. All right, I'll be back. I'm back, hello. Okay, as promised, I, where is it? Here it is. I sewed around with this very, very inexpensive cheap little machine I have that doesn't even do very well. And there's something really weird going on here because that's a zigzag stitch that you can see here. So I was going around, I just decided to switch her up and add a little ziggies. Um, so there she is. Just a simple little project that just really, there we go, get that in the correct. This really um, fabric lined, sewn, ready to go. Um, I can slip some things in there. And uh, yeah, there's that. Well, uh, while I was sewing, I went ahead and sewed these as well. So this one is now sewn. And on this one, I just went straight, st made a straight U and didn't sew here on the edges. I didn't feel like it needed it. And um, I kind of like that look. So um, so that one, and then on this one, I did even less. I also did a U, but I stopped here at the beginning, whereas this one, I went all the way to the edge. So the point is, is there is not um, a correct way to sew. This is just a little cute little pocket. And this paper has almost a leather feel to it once it's um, dried and everything. I don't know, it's just cool. Maybe leather's not the right word. I don't know. Anyway, um, so there they are, done, ready to go. Um, and just a simple little project. So I hope you enjoyed this. And if you ever do get a chance to get a hold of some player piano rolls, um, snatch them up because they are just so, so much fun to play with. And you can create just some really simple yet get really pretty um, pieces for your journal. These would go in pockets perhaps. Um, I've actually, and I've said that before, I think I've created actually pages that are pockets inside my books um, and then gluing them, affixing them to some kind of a sturdy paper, whether it's uh, just a pretty uh, cardstock paper, even just tea dyed paper, helps to keep them flat because they are so permanently curled after being rolled up for, if you were rolled up for over a hundred years, you'd be permanently curled too. So um, can be a challenge to work with, but they're awesome and they're fun and um, I like the results. So that's it. Thank you for joining me and stay tuned. Hopefully I have some more. I'm getting ready to get started on a new, um, a new journal. I'm sort of toying right now with what I want to do on the cover. So as soon as I get that figured out, I'll dive in. Maybe this weekend, I'll dive in and try to record a little bit. I am going to do another mixed media cover. Uh, but I, yeah, but that's all the further I am. So <laughs> stay tuned for more. And I hope you are safe and happy and aren't going totally crazy and seen. Um, and, and I hope that you stay well. Thank you. Bye.